reality. What we had was real. I loved you, but I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do us anymore. It's not you. It's me. Bye forever. I asked my cats what other engine there is. Dodo. And that was it. You have probably heard the old news that Unity announced changes to its terms of service. In response, there was a massive, in my opinion, justified outcry that went through the game development community. And a week later, Unity went back on the changes and announced more reasonable terms. That's the very short version of the events. In this video, I want to talk a bit how this led to me switching from Unity to Godot and how that worked out for me and how long it took. I will talk about the pros and the cons I encountered and I hope this helps if any of you have played with the thought of switching engines. By the way, I'm an indie game dev working on Korabi Starship. Check it out on the Steam page if you are new to this channel. So, let's jump right in. You're probably asking yourself why I decided to switch engines. I learned so much about Unity. Now I would have to learn another engine all over. Unity announced something more reasonable, so all should be good, right? We can leave this behind us and I stay with Unity, right? The problem at its core is a loss of trust. You know, like this one time I showed Loki an orange. Trust forever broken. They announced changes that affect already published games. If I continue to use Unity, there is no guarantee anymore that they won't change the terms of service again in the future. And at that point in time, I'll be so far along in the development that I will be completely at the mercy of whatever Unity decides. But right now, I'm only seven months into the development of Korabi Starship. Switching to another engine is still doable. And I went with Godot because A, it is open source and therefore not owned by a company. No unforeseeable changes in the terms of service. B, it has become a very strong engine for 2D games in the past few years. It can do 3D as well, but I haven't really looked into it. And then C, because it's open source, I have access to the source code. I had quite a few moments with Unity where I wish I could change a thing in the source code. Now I can. A big question I had was how long would it take me to port the game? I didn't want to invest like half a year, but I had no clue what I was getting into. So I gave myself one week of trying Godot and porting my game. I'd see if I like the engine and how far I could get. Then I would make a time estimate for the whole port or abandon the idea and go back to Unity. The first week of porting went very, very well. I started to fall in love with Godot. Some things it did even better than Unity. And of the seven months of game dev I did on Kurabi Starship, I managed to port about two months of work in the first week of porting. <laughs> Amazing! From that, I estimated that porting speed should only increase since I was more, more familiar with the engine. I hoped that I could maybe manage the whole port in two weeks. So I fully committed to the port. And here I went quite terribly wrong. Do not underestimate the time it takes. In the end, the full port took me about two full months. I would say it's still worth it in the long run, but it did put me behind in my schedule. I did manage though to improve the structure of my code base along the way, so that's a plus. But be aware. I would say the biggest time sink was recreating the prefabs that I had in Unity. I did not even have too many. Most of my work in Unity went into the code base. But if you are way further ahead with your game development, there might be a point where it's not really worth it, the time investment. Unfortunately, I couldn't simply take my existing Unity project and import it into Godot. There are quite a few differences between the two engines and how the games are structured. Instead of scenes and game objects and prefabs that you know from Unity, we are now dealing with a tree structure for the whole game that uses nodes and scenes that are kind of the new prefabs. It sounds confusing, but Godot's structure is quite intuitive to learn. It just means I have to recreate assets from scratch. 
Gudu supports C Sharp, so this is a huge time saver though. But nevertheless, I cannot simply copy paste my code. I still had to adjust every single script I had. Some scripts, like the scene loading and management, which are very entwined with Godot's notes and scene structure, needed to be done almost from scratch. If you start a new game in Godot, instead of porting from Unity, I would probably recommend using Godot's own language, GDScript, as it still integrates much nicer with the engine and documentation often focuses on GDScript. Alright, so let me tell you about Godot's awesome features that I love and some of the downsides I encountered. Remember, I am a total beginner with Godot. If I got something wrong or overlooked a better way to do things, let me know in the comments, please. First, tile maps. I love working with the tile maps. It's so easy to create rule tiles, though in Godot they are called terrains. There are different types available if you want to just match sides or corners and you can paint things like probabilities on the tiles, which was not possible in Unity. Saved me so much time. Love it. And adding a multiply shader for my water tiles was also super easy. This is what sold me in the first week of porting. Next, I love localization. It is just such a joy to use. I just throw in my Excel sheets and make a small change to the code. Bam! Done! No more localization tables to keep track of. Formatting things needs a bit more coding, but I still prefer this to how Unity handled localization. Alright, the next thing. Remember this one video I did way back about rendering of my textures, where I explained that transparent pixels and textures have a white color and that this white color can bleed into your graphics when you render it? I had to do this whole workaround to manually set the color of those transparent border pixels. Well, Godot just automatically does that for you on import. I could hug Godot for this. It makes me incredibly happy. And then there's the documentation. Of course, there's less documentation for Godot, cause less people use it, but there's documentation inside the engine. I can just type in what I'm looking for and Godot will list all available methods. It is super handy and I use it all the time. Then there's this other video I made where I explained how animations can be reused for different sprite sheets. Well, turns out this is also way easier in Godot, quite a time saver. Then there is this small little thing about audio. In Unity I noticed when I stop an audio track in the middle there is this audibly crackling or clicking sound which comes from cutting off audio abruptly. I wrote a tiny script that very quickly fades out a sound instead to avoid this and I think Godot also handles this automatically. I haven't heard anything like this. But then I don't have a particularly good ear for such things, so take this with a grain of salt. And then lastly, it's shaders. It's so easy to write shader code. That's it. Love it so much. Now, let's get to the cons list. I don't want to bash Godot at all, but I do think it's important to mention negatives as well. So you know what you're getting into if you're thinking about trying Godot yourself. As I already mentioned, there's less documentation. If you Google a specific issue you're having for Unity, it is way easier to find a Stack Exchange or Reddit post discussing the issue. For Godot, you have to either use stronger Google magic or figure things out yourself. One time that led to me being truly lost and it was only to my Discord community who really helped me out there. Shout out to nickname generator fail. Thanks so much. And then there's the Y sort. Sprite sorting based on a pivot point feels quite unintuitive in Godot and I really preferred how it was handled in Unity. But I saw the newly released Godot 4.2 improves Y sort. I haven't tried it out yet, so there's hope. And then the biggest thing for me with Godot, the biggest downside is the Polygon 2D Mesh Editor. So, if I want to put some bones in my trees, so I can shake them, you know, I need a 2D triangle mesh around the, sp around the sprite and some weights on the vertices for how much the bones affect them. 
Unity had some nifty tools that automated this and I could also copy paste across similar sprites. In Godot, this is mostly manual work and so tedious. If I had one wish for Godot, it is to improve this. There are some more points once you get into the nitty gritty of things and a lot of people wouldn't really call them weak points of Godot, but rather design choices, but I want to mention them anyway. So one is that there's no true global variables to store things like a player score. Of course, there are workarounds, one being the autoload feature, but that only works with nodes and means that nodeless scripts cannot access those variables. If that sounds a bit cryptic, don't worry about it. I'm just ranting a bit about my first world coding problems here. And the last thing I would want to mention is uh, installing packages is a bit more difficult. In Godot, there is not really a package manager. I needed the Newtonsoft package for my save files and had to familiarize myself with NuGeta and install Newtonsoft via the command line. But anyway, once I figured it out, it, it was actually quite simple and fast, but you have to get used to it. In conclusion, Godot is quite a powerful engine. There's nothing that I need for my game that I cannot do with Godot so far. But I feel it would be a bit harder to use for people that are beginners with game dev. I'd also recommend using GDScript from the start. And it's definitely in the small details that I noticed that Godot still has a bit of way to go in terms of offered functionality. But at the same time, there are very frequent improvements published. And well, I love the engine and I finished Kohlrabi Starship with Godot. And now a big fat thanks to my first Patreons for your support. I am so grateful. If you want your name in the credits of Kohlrabi Starship, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos. Bye bye.